Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're going to be building a Land Raider from Warhammer 40k. Now this is a request I get quite a lot, and it's something I've always wanted to build. And I built the tank in preparation for this, just to make sure that I could actually make it work. So we've got ourselves a drawing board here, and we're just going to have to work out some basic calculations of how we're going to build this thing. Now the Land Raider's built of, let's just build draw one side of it, so it's, it's a bit like this, and then it comes down at a slope like this. And then it comes back like that. Now, the thing is with the Land Raider is it has its tracks just like a World War II tank along these sides like so. And then under the top part, it actually has the tracks covered up by some sort of cover like so. Now, then the harder bit is we can't have the tracks exposed. We've got to actually have some sort of cover over the side of this tracks. Now, fitting them all into this package is going to be extremely hard. And then to finish it off, we're going to have to do it in a nice sort of ultramarines pattern. And then on top of that, we've got to build the hull. Now, the hull is going to be a little bit easier to build. It's basically a box like so. And then it slopes up on levels. So you've got like one level with a turret on there. Then a second level with the actual just hatches on like so. So that should be quite simple. Now, the door itself is going to be a complicated part. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to build the door. I'm going to try to do something like have one land rotor there and have another rotor here. And then just try to do something where I can mesh them together. But I don't think it'll fit. And I'm worried that if it starts moving as well, that we might just have a mouth on the front that just destroys the own ship. But anyway, let's get building. Now we've got the basic hull constructed. I'm working out where to put the sprockets for the wheels. Now, we need the tracks to go around it like I showed on the diagram up there, but I need it to be controllable and I need it to be able to be a certain size. So I'm also gonna have to connect up the outer armor pieces. So this is what I'm working on these for. And what I'm gonna do is extend these out. I'm gonna make these a certain length wide and then work out what track to actually build. Now, when it comes to these wheels, what we need to do is get another seven out. And we're going to need to work out what extension we actually need on them. So I'm thinking about a three extension is probably going to be the best at the moment. Not too much more. Probably about three out. And then three should cover all bases in case something goes wrong. So like that should be good. And then we'll just build it into a sort of cross sort of shape. Like so. Get a bit of a frame rate drop. And then build that across like that. Now that should give us quite a good bit of traction. But it's going to be a little bit wonky as the thing goes around it. So we're just going to finish it up by building some of these guys around it like so. Now that should give us quite a good wheel sort of base you could say. Now we need to work out what size will actually fit into that wheel. So we're going to have to have it like this. So that's four blocks long. And then we'll also have this track on the outside. So let's just work that out. So no, that's not going to work. That's just going to catch on the side. So it'll have to be another one out. And then like something like this. So then that leaves us with... How many does that leave us with between here? One, two, three, four, five. So that's five. So if we do a track that has a four width. So something like this. A um, new small ship. Whack that there. And then we just build a four width block track. So four by four by four. And then we build onto it with a rotor, a simple rotor sort of design like this, just so it's got a nice sort of traverse up and down and it can flex around the actual running wheels. But something like that should do pretty well. And then we'll just continue that on. And I'm guessing we need about 20 to fit the whole sprocket around the whole of the track. And then we'll just put we'll wrap that around in a bit. And then we should have that part of the tank. Anyway, I'll get back to you later. So we've reached the next stage now. We've got both pairs of tracks on and we've got the rotors turning in the right direction. So the tracks are actually going to be pulling it along. Now, we need to work out if it actually works. So we're going to have to test this on, add some gravity to this base and see if it works. So let's get the gravity generators in there first. So gravity and one large reactor should do it. So let's get two fives down like so and we'll get a large generator in there so now we've got gravity so as soon as we turn this on we should get some traction and be able to test this out now let us begin now we're gonna step inside the cockpit we've got a little bit of a drop before we get to the ground but i'm hoping everything's working and hopefully the tracks will stay on otherwise we'll have to work out a different way of actually keeping them on so we're gonna power it up we've got gravity cubes at each corner to keep it on the ground so there we go we're actually on the ground now and we should be beginning to move Yes, it's very World War One sort of tank reminiscent. 
yeah it seems to be working quite fine the track seems to be staying on everything seems to be moving rather well but we need to get the upper hull part on so we actually cover up the top part of these tracks and so on so i'm going to cut that there right we've now finished adding the outer shell so i've added the actual rotating turrets on the side that do rotate and we've got two rocket launchers and two miniguns so quite a nice little armament couldn't really get the sort of uh, las cannons look that i really wanted to go for well, maybe I can try that at a different time. Now, I've customised the actual centre a little bit more because with this adding of these extra armour panels on the sides, it means that the middle had to be brought up quite a considerable amount. So I've added uh, another layer, to another two machine guns to the actual centre turret there. And I've added like a sponsor mounted turret here. As well as having to customise the back up a little bit. I've added some colour as you can see. And we've got the exhaust stacks looking very nice if I can say. And luckily, I managed to get it working with the tracks inside the covers. So we can just see there's a little bit of a gap there. And I'll go and turn this thing on for you now. I also relocated the location of the starting place to in here. So it looks just a little bit nicer, a little bit more sweet. So from behind, I think it looks quite accurate. I mean, the front is not as accurate because I'm going to later on try to add a working door. And now that's going to be a challenge in its own right. But we'll have to see. So let's actually just turn this baby on to make sure everything's working still. So we've got the lights, we've got the track still working. Yes, absolutely perfect. All we have to do is maybe turn the lights on the side ones to actually red so they like represent the sort of lasers of the Land Raider's weapons locking on and then we should have quite a nice accurate Land Raider. Apart from the front part that needs a little bit more editing I believe. But anyway, I'll get back to you shortly. I've added some final modifications just to make sure everything stays in one place. I've changed some light colours and I've also added some obstacles for us. So every tank since World War One has been able to navigate a trench. So one from 30,000 years in the future should easily be able to do it. Then we've got a steep lip. Now you see a lot of tanks these days trying to navigate these things. And we'll have to see how ours does. And then finally we've got a steep incline onto that flat. Now if we can navigate all this and the treks all stay on we know we're on for a winner. Now, unlike the tank before, the tracks have been very well tightened and everything seems to be very accurate. There's no little guesstimates in how far things are gonna work. So let's hop in inside and try this thing out. Now, it's just epic to be inside a 40K style vehicle. So let's blow ourselves down onto the ground. We've got movement and there we go, we're off. So you can see, we could try to increase the speed, and I'll do that a little bit shortly, but let's just see if we can get over these obstacles. So you've got the tracks turning very well. We've got the upper area. We've even got movement left and right if we so do need it. We've got the red lasers of the um, last cannons and so on. Now we're just going to go down this first part of the trench, and I want to see what's going to happen here. I'm a little bit worried. Oh, no, we've managed to climb it perfectly without even going down it. Now that's good. Now we've got the steep step. Now I'm not feeling very confident about this. But if it is a tank, we should be able to do it. Now, we're losing a little bit of grip, but we're trying to get it. Look, there we go. We're up. Perfect. Beautiful. This is like, this is really a Land Raider. This is no poncy little tank. Now, this is looking a bit worrying here. Now, do we need to give it a little bit of assist? Yeah, let's give it a little bit of assist with the grip. What I'm doing now is just pushing down so the gyroscopes can try to get a little bit more grip on it. And there we go. We're up. We're over the lip obstacle. Now, the final one that should be the easiest is the steep incline. Now, we're just going to need to get our tracks onto it. So, tracks are getting onto it now. Oh, we're getting a bit of air by the looks of it. Are we out of the gravity field's range? Oh, sugar, there's no gravity. That's not what we want. What we want. Let's quickly get some gravity down. Uh, five, five. There we go. Gravity's back on. I was getting a little bit worried there. Thought we were going to lose our Land Raider. And it's navigating the last little bit itself. Right, so now for the weapons test. I'm doing some off-roading and I've got one weapon on the side ready to activate. So let's try it out. So that's going to be going over these mounds. And I'm going to be on the side of this little turret here. Trying to line up some shots. Now it's going to be a little bit hard. It's a little bit of an angle. And we're also going over some steep bumps by the look of it. So when we come down the side of this one, we should be aligned. And I should have a quick window of opportunity to fire. Because... That is how this tank works, sadly. We don't have too much of a opportunity to fire now. It's coming down. And here we go. We have a limited window. There we go. We've managed to destroy our first target. Let's help ourselves out. Watch it do some self-traversing. Very nice. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And make sure you check this out on the workshop. The link is in the description. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.